right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you in here for worship today. Uh, hopefully you braved all the heavy rain out there to get in here dry, but we're glad you're here. I'd like to welcome uh, those watching online today as well. Uh, we're happy you are joining us. We've got a great day of worship uh, planned today. Just a couple of brief announcements before uh, we get going. Uh, some activities today. There's a 4 o'clock uh, deacons meeting today. Uh, a big night for our students at 6 p.m. Uh, and a night pool party. Yeah. Pretty stoked about that. But, um, uh, yeah, and then uh, tonight our worship ministry is going to be rehearsing at 6 as well. Uh, just a reminder that during the month of June... There are no Wednesday night activities, uh, continuing to take a break uh, for our volunteers to kind of have a month off there uh, because they work tirelessly throughout the year. And uh, also, uh, we are in need of two notaries uh, to be at, uh, at a meeting next Sunday, a parent meeting right after the worship service. So if you are a notary, if you'll contact uh, Brandon or, or the church office this week, uh, or Brother Paul, see them and, and let us know. If you know someone, they make it be here to help out uh, just to notarize some forms for our youth camp. That would be great. Something else we are excited about is a senior adult, a senior adult luncheon. Uh, it's been a minute or two since we've had one of those, so we are excited about that. That's Wednesday, June the 16th at noon uh, in the fellowship hall. Everything will be provided, but you need to sign up. So see Brother Jim. Uh, for that, for more information or to sign up, okay? I believe that's it. Uh, as I said, we are happy you're here today for worship. And uh, just to usher in the presence of the Lord today, let's begin with prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, God, we seek you with all of our heart this morning. God, we thank you for the freedom we have, God, to gather in this place today. God, for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. So, God, as we start this service, God, may we have thanksgiving in our heart, God, as we come into your presence. God, especially as we sing about heaven, uh, God, and the joy that fills our heart for the promises, God, that you've given us. So, God, we welcome the presence of the Lord here in this place. God, and I pray that uh, you would just draw us unto you. God, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. And all the church said, amen. You can't be seated. Let's all stand up. Here we go. Come on, Miss Barbara. Here we go. Oh, they tell me I'm a home for me.
Let's keep singing. Here we go. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just nothing. Saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, oh, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from good singing there. Man, you may be seated uh, this morning. Yeah, we went way back to get some of those songs. Uh, they're not even in the hymn book. Uh, we had to go pre-hymn book uh, to get those two songs. So hopefully you recognize those uh, just as we celebrated the Lord. We're going to continue uh, in worship today. The next song is called Battle Belongs. And uh, man, I uh, as we went over the past year, the pandemic and everything, and you listen to Christian radio, you heard a lot of new songs about like this, living in uncertain days and all the struggles that were going on, and artists started writing songs just like this one. And uh, it's all throughout Scripture that the, the Lord has told us that the battle doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. So, um, uh, and there's victory always in the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, you worship Him through this song today. It's called Battle Belong. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see.
seated this morning, church. Amen. In keeping uh, with the spirit of worship in this place today, um, I'm going to read to you from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning in verse 14. Um, Just a powerful passage of scripture about God's mercy. 14 says, this is what the Lord says. So this should grab our attention right out of the chute here. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. Verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Next song is called Waymaker. There's a line in it that comes straight out of that scripture. Even when I don't see it, you're working. God is making a way. Don't give up. Just because you don't see him visibly answering your prayer, I can assure you he is working for your good. And that same God that came out of this book is in this place today and willing to do those same things from you, to move mountains, to fight your battles. If you'll just seek him with all of your heart, this morning. So we're just going to bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord and enjoy uh, and soak up the presence of God here in this place this morning. And uh, after a moment, uh, I'm going to ask Greg if he would just to uh, lead us um, in prayer and into the presence of God today. So you be obedient as we pray. so grateful to be here this morning so grateful to be in your house father i'm so thankful for every person every family that is represented here father i pray for your spirit to have free reign in this room right now father i know that like me everybody is struggling with something father so we live in a world that is not made for us that belongs to somebody other than you right now you've given that person permission and uh we word says that you know we we live here uh, we're not of this world and so we struggle father and i know that that's happening this morning i know there are struggles spoken and unspoken father i pray for the power of your holy spirit to have free reign in this room father and that the devil would have no hold here this morning father you are the way maker and i, I love you for your word i love you for what it teaches us I'm, uh, i love you for what we were taught this morning father to examine ourselves father to 
get back to our true love, our first love for you, God. Let's pray this worship be music to your ears, Lord. In Jesus' name.
Aren't you thankful today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the spirit of worship this morning. It's all good. <laughs> Wasn't really sure what I was going to say to transition, you know, but uh, I guess the, we'll just transition. <laughs> um, you guys know that I've been talking for a while about this idea of refocusing because it's so easy for us <clears throat> with this, a lot of things going on in life to be distracted, uh, to lose our focus, to... Um, just be so overwhelmed with things in life in general that we tend to lose our focus. You know, I, I have to be honest with you. When we were uh, singing that song, um, one thing that came to mind about all of these songs today is, um, you know, we sing about how good God is and how great he is and how he can work. Uh, and that's not necessarily what's going to change us or, or, or move us. Because we sing about the fact that God is here and he's present and he works when we don't realize it. But one of the things that I realize is that until you and I come to the point of saying, okay, God, that's when we really begin to experience God. It's not that we know God is great and magnificent and he does these awesome things. It's not until you and I come to the point of just saying, okay, God, okay, God. Because you see, you see what happens is we've got everything lined out. We can do all these things. We can accomplish so much in our life. We can lose our sight of who God is, even though we know he's there and we know he's present and we know he's powerful. But not until we come to that point of saying, okay, God. Then at that moment, we begin to feel the change. Because it's no longer us, it's no longer me, but it's the ability to be able to see things from a different perspective. It, it's, it's the understanding that something else has to come into my life to allow me to be able to make it through. And, and that's, that's when a transformation happens in our life. You know, it's, it's kind of like we, we've celebrated over the past couple of weeks all these graduates and they're transitioning into another stage of life, whatever that might be, work, uh, military service, college, whatever it is, there's a, there's a transformation that happens because there's a difference. No longer are they high school, but now they're graduates and going to be moving on into the next stage of life. That happens for all of us. We're, we're changing as we go along, but it's not, it's not until we come to this point of saying, okay, then we begin to change. Today, I just want to briefly talk to you about this idea of being transformed because when we refocus and for the next couple of weeks we're going to be looking at very specific ways in which we are being transformed and refocus as we look at different ways that Jesus affects our life not only our lives but how we per perceive scripture how we look at the salvation that we have in our life how we look at how we're supposed to function as a church all of those things as we refocus on this idea of how am I going to make it through life when life is so crazy and chaotic. And I'm here to tell you that we are not created or made or our purpose is to succeed in life. You think, well, Paul, 
<laughs> what are you saying? I'm not supposed to do anything good? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you and I are not made for us alone to succeed in life. That's not our purpose. My purpose is not for me just to be able to do good things. If it is, it's already happened. There's been, I think, some good that's happened in my life. And there's something more. And we have to look at that purpose that we have and to constantly look at being transformed. I want to remind you of some fun things that have happened in life. I don't know if that's me, Alan, but there's a lot of feedback. I don't know if they can hear that online or not. But one of the things that we need to look at is, um, in fact, I just want to take a look at this picture. Making mud pies. Today would be a good day to do that, would it not? With all this rain and everything. You know, we all can remember as a child making mud pies. I don't, I don't know how we came up with the idea or the title of mud pie. Uh, you know, the question I want to ask you is, did anybody ever eat mud pies? Uh, those kind of mud pies. Because, you know, it's, it's not really the purpose of a mud pie. You know, the idea when you think about what it is to make a mud pie, man, it's just dirt and water and anything else you want to throw in there. Living or organic or whatever it might be. Um, and then you can try to force feed your brother or sister or do whatever. Not that that ever happened in my life. But we know we enjoy these things. And what's the purpose of a mud pie? It's that we love doing that. And now some parents are thinking, okay, great. Now my kid's going to want to go home and make mud pies. Uh, but that's why they're in children's church and they don't listen to this. So we're, you're safe. The reason we don't eat mud pies is because what's in them? That's not the purpose. It's just to have fun and to get messy. Because, um, you know, one of the things that we have to understand is the whole purpose of that. To be able to know that we have this stuff to have fun with. But, but I want to also point out another mud pie. Now, that's the one that I would eat. <laughs> Same name, is it not? But one's made with different ingredients. One is made for the purpose of eating, and one is not, hopefully. One is made for our enjoyment, and the other one we also enjoy, but not necessarily eating. Of course, you know, dirt's good for us. It's not too bad, as long as we don't consume too much of it. But there's a difference here because when we, when we begin to think about the ingredients that we put into those things, whether it's the dirt and the water or whether it's all those ingredients that make it taste so good and look like that and want us to eat it, I would eat that. I'm making everybody hungry here. But we live our life trying to make something and sometimes we use the wrong ingredients. Think about that. Sometimes we want so much just to go out there and to make some kind of mud pie that really won't do anything because it's just dirt and water and insects and grass and sticks and rocks and whatever else that you could think that could go in there. And the experience of that is fun. But the end result is not necessarily the purpose that we have. And we go through life trying to make things work, trying to do things, trying to accomplish things. But yet it's all because we don't really have the right ingredients to accomplish what we really need to, what our real purpose in life is. Success is made from hard work or is it just what other people say is successful? Because every single one of us can define what success is. Just like in today's time, we're redefining a whole lot of things in this world that we live in that we're not intended to redefine. You know, I believe there was a purpose in creation and in life. We are who we are created to be. But we tend to redefine things and think that we can just substitute different ingredients. 
What are we really supposed to do with our life? How are we supposed to continue on? What's the real purpose in life? <laughs> That's a question to think about, right? Maybe not on a rainy day like today. What's our real purpose? What are we supposed to do? What's the life that we have out there? If we're going to try to rethink and repurpose and refocus on what God really intends for us, you have to ask yourself this question. What life? What life? The life that I live? The life that someone else defines? The life that I find in God's word? What life am I supposed to be living out here? It's kind of like this. What mud pie do you really want to eat? you got to decide that before you start navigating through life or you're just going to continue to go on. And before long, you may just have a big mess on your hand instead of something that is going to taste good. Do you see what I'm saying, church? We have to come to the understanding that no matter what life does to us, we have to choose what our real purpose in life is. So many people in today's time just say the phrase, I can make whatever I want with my life. I can make whatever I want with my life. It's my life. And you're right. You can. You can make choices. You can travel down that path. You can decide what you want to for your life. But is that the purpose that you and I have? Just to live life however we want to. Because I'm telling you, there is something that you and I need in our life to be able to really feel that we have this life from God and we're living with that purpose in mind. You see, the problem is, is that we always come back to the fact of I, I can make whatever I can choose for myself. I can do these things. I can handle. I can overcome. But what we have to do is understand what our, is our real purpose. Jesus promised us an abundant life. We're talking about life. He said, this is the life that I'm going to give you. In fact, in John 10, 10, 10, he said, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Have it to the fullest. That's defined kind of as having it completed. Wouldn't you like a, at the end of your life to be able to say, this is the life completed, however long or short that might be, to say, I've completed life. I've completed this purpose. And it's nothing that you or I can do on our own. It's something that is given to us. Jesus said, I came that you may have life. We're told to have a new life. Romans 6, 4 says, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. This new life. So when we begin to decide what life is going to be for us, what we're going to do with our life, how we're going to make our choices, what our identity in life is going to be, we have to understand that if we're going to choose this life, it may or may not be associated with what God intends for us. If we choose, I choose, I can do what I want to. But if we understand that we have been given a life by God, and our purpose is to live that life, then the Bible says that that is a new life for us. Not the one that you and I live every single day. It's a new life. It's a newness. Why? Because gee, we were buried with Jesus, raised from the dead, and given this new life. So there's a new life. So that means that this new life that I have also creates a new purpose. Did you get that? When you and I understand that we have a new life in Christ, then that means that we have a new purpose now in life, in living, in being on this world that God created. We have a new life. I don't know about you, but I would like to start things over again in some cases, in some circumstances, in some situations in my life. I'd like to go back and say, let's rewind that and replay it with a different outcome. But that doesn't happen, does it? Not when we are trying to live this life and make these choices. But Jesus says there's a new life. A new life for you and for me. This newness is defined as a new state of life. 
a new way of living, a new understanding and perspective of how to see things. We have been given this idea of a new life And sometimes that's hard for us to grasp. And this is why the Apostle Paul tried to explain things, because he knew what it was like to have a new life. I mean, his life was drastically changed. He went from thinking he was following God's purpose for his life and persecuting all these radicals that were out there, saying those are the Jesus followers, and they're not following what we've all been taught and our understanding. And he had the power to be able to go out and to persecute, to arrest, to do all these things to these Christians. But then he got a new purpose in life, did he not? When Jesus came into his life, then everything changed. His new life now had a new purpose and a new understanding of how to make it through. His whole perspective changed. It was no longer, I'm doing this for me, I can do this in my own life, to the fact that I am no longer in control. Now that's a hard thing for us to do. But we have to understand, this is our purpose. If we're going to refocus upon Jesus Christ and have him come into our life, then we need to understand that it's not because of what we do, but it's what Christ has done in our life. And this is why he says, Paul, the Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come, a new life. A second chance at life. Who's been, who gives us second chances? But God himself. How is it possible for us today, from this moment on, to have a second chance? The real purpose in life is that we need to understand this life, new life that we have. And what it really means to live out our purpose created by God. To know that we have the right ingredients now to be able to live and hopefully obtain the outcome that God intends for each and every one of us. But it's sometimes impossible for us to do that. You see, the Apostle Paul understood what it was like. And I want you today to understand that. So many of us are just trying to live life the best way that we possibly can. But there's something more in each and every one of us that we must surrender to in order to experience the new life that Christ has for us. That is our purpose, to live in Christ. How, how do we do that in today's time when it's the constantly telling us that we just need to do whatever we can and everybody has a right to think and to do whatever they want? That's true. Everybody has that choice. But is that really the full purpose of who you are? You see, we have been taught that in order for us to understand what Christ has given us, then we must die to ourselves. We must not be so controlled by the selfishness within us, but allow Christ to come. When we begin to, when we sing the song, Waymaker, and begin to understand the words that you are, your presence is here, you're with us, and there's really more than what we can do because we can't even see how you work sometimes or know where you're working at sometimes. We just trust that, God, you are who you are. But we also must come to the realization that if we're going to live out our purpose that God has given us, that God has given you, then we must understand this is the new life that I have to live. Not in my old way, not doing things my own way, but to be able to know that Christ has given us that. That's again why Paul says, Ephesians 4.22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This is where we get the concept of being transformed. To know that you and I can't just make it in life. We have to make the decision to know that God is what I really need in my life to be able to survive. The problem is, you and I like our old ways too much. And we hang on to them. 
sin and all. And I'm not just talking about the big sins, if there ever is big sins and little sins. It's sin. Whether I'm talking about people behind their back or whether I'm going out committing adultery. Whether I just don't like being around somebody or whether I'm taking a knife in my hand and going after somebody. It doesn't matter. Sin is sin. Sin is when we disobey a God who has created us to be something different than what you and I sometimes try to be. And that brings us into conflict. There are people in my life who I dearly love, but I have told them, as long as you make these choices, your life is going to be conflict. Every time you and I sin against God, it brings conflict into our soul. Because we come to the point of saying, I want the new life, but I hang on to the old. And you see, what that creates for us is conflict and chaos and confusion in our life. This is why Paul says you have to be transformed. You have to walk in this new life. You have to understand what God has done for you so that we may continue to walk in the freedom of the new life that Christ has for us. This is why Paul says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now we've heard that verse before. We've heard it over and over again. Be transformed. Be transformed. Don't conform to this world, but be transformed. But what does that really mean for you and me? If we look at the context of where that verse comes from, the Apostle Paul but I'm telling you, Romans is a great book, but you're going to have to chew on it for a while, okay? Because it'll choke you. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in there. And what Paul is talking about when he wrote this letter to the Romans. These were believers in Rome. And you can imagine all the stuff that was going on in Rome. It was like a mega city. It was like the metropolis with all of the bad stuff that you could ever think of that was going on in there. And here, here were these groups of believers, these group of Christians, trying their best to live the life that God created for them, trying their best to understand this new way that they're supposed to live. And there was constant conflict and chaos and persecution. And Paul says, if, if you go back and read chapter 11, he's talking about this idea of, of the remnant of Israel and what Israel's supposed to do and what the Jews are understanding. And, he, and I just wanted to share with you, this is not in your notes or anything, but in chapter 11, verse 33, this is what the Apostle Paul says. He says, oh, oh, I can just imagine it when he's writing this. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. Let me just say that again. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. That means Paul is saying, there is nothing that compares to my God. He is more than you and I can ever understand. This is what Paul is saying. He's writing to them. Remember how great God is. The depth of his riches, his wisdom and knowledge of God. And he goes on in verse 36 and he says, From him and through him and to him all things are. To him be glory forever. Amen. And this is when he says, I appeal to you, therefore. Knowing how great God is and how awesome he is, I appeal to you. I implore you. I charge you. I'm asking you, therefore, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living Sacrifice is holy and acceptable to God, which is a spiritual act of worship. Don't conform to what this world says you need to be. Be transformed. Be transformed. Why? Because, oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He is a judging God. But it's because he wants the best for you. He is a God who cannot look upon sin because he wants you to be this new creation in Christ Jesus. And sin can't have a part of that. He wants us to be able to say, I can't make it in life so that he can come and say, I've already paid. I've already given. You have all the ingredients that you need. 
But sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we get distracted when we understand the perfect will of God, the purpose that God has for you and I. What is the purpose that God has for you? Have you ever asked yourself that? Have you ever asked yourself, God, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Do you know what he said? It's very simple. It's very easy. We try to complicate things because we want to make it all about us and how we're going to make it through. And all you and I have to do is say, okay, God. Okay, God. Because we give up so that we can have a new life in Jesus. And when we make mistakes and when we lose our focus, he's right there to say, just refocus on me. Refocus on your true purpose. Our purpose is to have new life in Jesus. Our purpose is to understand that it's beyond our capability to be able to make it through life. We have to have God's help. We have to have Christ in us. We have to live in this new life. And you still have the choice which one you want to do. But it's at this moment, in this time, that I believe God is calling us to refocus on our purpose. Mud pies have a purpose. The ones with the good ingredients and the ones with the not so good ingredients. Have you ever made that mud pie and then you just wanted to bake it? And of course, mom would never let us come in and put it in the oven, of course. So we just had to use the old-fashioned oven, the sun. And eventually, that mud pie, however it was formed in whatever container it was, it would dry up. Now, two things would happen. Usually at our house, <laughs> mom would usually say, clean that mess up before we even you know, had the chance to let it dry. And once you clean up a mud pie, you know, it just goes back to dirt, water, sticks, rocks, whatever. Dead insects, because now they've been in the mud pie and they're no longer living. But they'll just go back to the dirt, right? Like all of us. So those ingredients just begin to, you know, hopefully go back to where they were. But on the occasion that we were able to let that mud pie harden... It could be maybe used for something else. Because you see, when you form mud into what we think mud pies and maybe into certain things, they kind of become new because there's a new purpose to it. You see, sometimes mud pies can become mud bricks. And with bricks, you have a new purpose. With what you thought was dirty and useless, now can be used to build, to strengthen, to border in, to protect, to keep you safe from the elements. Mud bricks now have a different purpose. Y you and I were created... Maybe not for the purpose that you and I think. Or maybe even you and I try to live today. We, we were created for a new purpose. A new life. Only found in Christ. You see that new purpose that you and I have today. Is to understand that Christ has already given us this new life. And all I have to do is to say. Okay God. Some of us here today, here or watching with us, some of us just need to say, okay, God. Some of you have been doing that because you've been in certain situations and circumstances in your life that you didn't plan for. And you have had to rely upon God. You have had to every day focus upon Jesus Christ in this new life. Because there's no way that you could have managed without Christ. There's no way you and I can understand our purpose in life. How are you supposed to love people that you can't love? Only in Christ. How are you supposed to forgive yourself when you've allowed choices in your life to bring on damaging, shameful memories in your life? Only through Christ. 
How are you and I supposed to be light in this world that is so full of darkness? Only in Christ. Because only in that new purpose can Christ build his kingdom. And he can do it through you. Regardless of what's happened today in this moment, he can do it. As long as you and I say, okay, God. Okay, God. It begins with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ died, and he was buried, and he rose again. And when we accept Christ, we have died with him and was buried with him and rose with him to a new life. You and I just need to maybe remember that. What's your purpose today? How are you making it through life today? Where is Jesus today? Because he can take your life and what you think about it. And he can make it something incredible. Something new. With a totally different purpose. Only in Christ. Only through Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word and for the reality that we can see through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray today that you will just speak to our hearts as we have sung about how great you are and sung about that you can do so much through us. Father, we need to come to the point of just saying, okay. Of giving up our grand scheme of how to do things and just trust you. For some of us today, Father, we're just at a hard place in life. Every day is a struggle. We don't know where our hope comes from. And it's in those moments, Father, that I pray we can refocus upon you and just say, Okay, God, we trust you. Okay, God, because this new life that you've promised is so much more than what I've experienced. So, Father, I pray today that if there's somebody here today that has lost their hope, that they may understand there is new life. And maybe for some, it's just refocusing upon your word and our trust in what God's promises are through scriptures. Maybe it's just in the experience of prayer and worship through the Holy Spirit touching us, filling us, encouraging us in this moment. Maybe it's just refocusing upon Jesus and what he has done for us to give us new life. To know there is hope both on this earth and forever through eternity. For some of us, Here today, I pray, God, you will speak to our hearts knowing that maybe we've turned our back on Jesus or maybe we've never accepted Jesus. And all we have to do is to ask Jesus to forgive us and ask him to come into our hearts if we believe. Believe in the new life through the resurrection that he gave us. Believe that Jesus died and buried and rose again for me. Maybe some of us need need to accept Jesus for the first time. You can do that right now. If you're here with us, if you're watching, just praying the prayer. God, I I need you in my life. And I'm sorry. I ask you to come into my heart. Because I believe in Jesus. In this quietness of the moment, I'm just going to ask you. Have you really experienced the newness that Jesus promises? Maybe you've made bad choices. Maybe you feel like you've done things in your life that you just can't get away from. Jesus shed his blood to wash away any and every sin. 
if we'll just say, okay, I accept. Every single one of us, sound of my voice, can right now in this moment refocus. God, I thank you for loving us so much that no matter where we're at, you have saved us. Through the blood of Jesus, through the promise of renewal every day, being transformed into your purpose and your purpose only. And that's a loving relationship with you, trusting you, obeying you, living this life that you created. God, help us to refocus upon you and the purpose that we have in life through Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be down front. If you need to come and just come to the altar and pray. If you need to come and say, hey, pray for me and with me. If you need to come and say, I need to make a change in my life. I need to accept Jesus for the first time in my life. Or maybe you come and say, I just prayed a prayer to change my life. And I want to celebrate with you today. Maybe every single one of us can just respond today as we sing this song about the glorious day of what Jesus has done for us. Remember to refocus the fact that God has a purpose for you, and that is Jesus. Let's stand together as we all sing and respond.
praise the Lord. One day, one day His truth is going to come and uh, call us unto His presence again. Spend eternity with Him in heaven. What a day that's going to be. But until then, we pray that you'll continue to share the love of God with whomever you come in contact with this week and be obedient unto Him. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today, especially those watching online. Thank you for worshiping with us. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. You are dismissed.